There's something undoubtedly childlike about the season of Christmas. Kids singing in pageants, families gathering around the tree opening presents, friends caroling and merrymaking. There's a sense of peace and generosity during the season that is impossible to deny. Many people love the traditions, things like candlelight carols and setting up the Christmas tree because they're inspiring and comforting. At least, that's one way we could look at these traditions. Another way would be to call them pacifying. As much as I love the way that many of us celebrate Christmas, I have to wonder sometimes if, in our attempt to make the story of Jesus' birth more accessible to children, in becoming attached to the feeling of comfort and peace we have in this season, we haven't taken a very serious, very uncomfortable story and neutered it. Let's put the cute aside for a second and look at the story for what it is. We start with the fact that God was born to an unwed girl who, because of an oppressive empire occupying her people, had to travel 90 miles for a census, not for the benefit of her care or representation in government, but so that her people could be controlled. Imagine going through life without any legal protections, constantly afraid that the state will use violence against you with complete impunity. Eventually, the woman and her betrothed reach a town where she's to give birth, only to find that they are not welcome in anyone's home, and so she must give birth in a less than ideal condition, placing her newborn child in the place where animals feed. Imagine being so poor that you can't even provide a safe place for your child to sleep. This is, of course, God incarnate, so you'd expect droves of religious leaders, dignitaries, and powerful people to be awaiting his birth. But no, what we see are magi, foreign astrologers that share neither the religion nor the ethnic heritage of a people that place a lot of emphasis on both, and shepherds, wandering outcasts that also would not have been welcome into anyone's home that night. Imagine inviting either class of people to your Christmas party, let alone the birth of your firstborn. Thankfully, the Magi don't come empty-handed, but famously bring gold, frankincense, and myrrh. The gold is an obvious gift for a king that we can all understand and covet, but what about the other two? Well, frankincense, a type of incense, represents that this child is the priest of all priests, come to offer sacrifice and collect all people around himself as a true place of worship, and myrrh, an anointing oil for burials, represents that this child is destined to die for his people. Imagine being the mother of this child, receiving these prophetic gifts. But don't get comfortable with these misfits and ominous predictions while your child lays in a manger, because danger is just around the corner. You see, a jealous king has heard about this newborn child, and he wants nothing to do with competition. What does he do? He orders the genocide of every male under the age of two in the region. Imagine the violence in every city, the blood on every street, the devastation in every home. Obviously wanting no part of that, the couple and the child flee their home country for safety in another. They arrive in Egypt poor, desperate, unable to speak the dominant language, and with little to offer their new society. For a few years, they scrape by as refugees, people who have no place to call their home. Imagine showing up to a foreign country with a newborn baby and nothing but what you can carry. Taken together, the story of Christmas is not warm and fuzzy. It's the story of an unwed pregnant woman living in poverty in an occupied nation, communing with outcasts, worshiping with people of other religions, witnessing genocide, and fleeing as a refugee. It is not comfortable. It is not hopeful. And it is most certainly not an appropriate story for children. So why do we try to make it one? Understand what I'm asking here. I'm not saying we shouldn't teach our children about the events of Jesus' birth, and I'm not saying that things like pageants and nativity scenes are necessarily bad. I think they're wonderful, in fact. I'm asking why we take a story filled with uncomfortable themes and complicated human suffering, distill them down for children, and never offer adults anything more. I'm asking why, instead of letting the story upset us to our core, we limit our own religious growth as adults to a wholesome, comforting, G-rated story for kids, glossing over all the challenging bits. Call me naive, but I don't think God makes mistakes. I don't think that God had some grand plan of being born into the aristocracy, worshipped by the religious elite, greeted by the emperor, and treated with honor from the moment he came into this world, and it just didn't pan out. What we read in scripture isn't a plan gone wrong filled with insignificant passing comments. Jesus came into this world the way he wanted to come into this world. Poor, outcast, oppressed, fleeing from violence, welcoming those on the margins. And so, we have to ask ourselves, why? 
It is not enough that we remember that Jesus came into this world. It is not enough to remember the basics of the story, distilling the events down to characters that fit into a family-friendly Christmas pageant. We have to ask ourselves why he chose to enter the world as he did. My guess is that it is not to make us feel comfortable. My guess is that he had no intention of people celebrating this feast with warm hearts and serene smiles, docile and content with the way things are, wanting nothing more than to turn inward and spend time with family away from the problems of the world. Are you kidding me? Jesus could have chosen to be born into comfort so that he could grow up big and strong, ready for long missions. He could have immediately surrounded himself with the powerful, making it easier to build his kingdom through politics. He could have appeared to an exclusive cast of people, those most refined and connected, the influencers of his day. Had it been any one of us, I'm guessing that's how we would have done it. But he didn't. The story could have been entirely different, and yet he chose this one, leading us, as his followers, to come to a very important, very uncomfortable conclusion, that this is the one we must choose for ourselves as well. Celebrated properly, Christmas is a holiday that should make us more aware of the human suffering all around us. People in poverty, refugees, outcasts. It should alert us to the horrors of violence in countries all around the globe and even in our streets. It should leave us disgusted with the powers and authorities of the world, men and women who seek wealth, control, and comfort above all. Now trust me when I say that I love the way we celebrate Christmas as much as anyone else. Christmas caroling, decorating the tree, festive dinners, candlelit liturgies. I eat it up every year. I love it. But there's something missing in all of it. The vibe, it's just not right. The story of Jesus' birth is not meant to be peaceful or comforting. It's meant to be a repudiation of the ways of the world, a wake-up call to those unconcerned with the plight of the poor and lonely, a warning to those content with the status quo of earthly kingdoms. Jesus could have come any way he wanted, and he chose not to appear to the rich, the powerful, or the content. He didn't even bother to make his presence known to them. Let that point sink in for a minute. Jesus came to this world. He took on flesh to be like us. He chose the people he wanted to be associated with, and it wasn't those who were safe, rich, influential, welcomed, or comfortable. Chances are, if the nativity were to happen today, it wouldn't be the yous and me's of the world that he would have visit him. Mm. That. That right there is the vibe Christmas should have for us. Rather than a time of merrymaking and excess, rather than turning inward and forgetting the problems of this world, Christmas should unsettle us to the core that Jesus revealed himself to people and situations entirely different from our own that he chose what we often don't choose for ourselves. Christmas is a time for rejoicing, don't get me wrong. The God of all the universe took on flesh to become like us so that we could become like him. Kind of amazing. It's only the single greatest event to have ever happened in human history. We should rejoice. I say sing your carols, shout your praises, get together with family and celebrate. But don't let that be the only thing you do. Don't let this holiday pacify you with a story for children. The birth of Jesus is not a heartwarming fairy tale. It is a call for repentance. It is a call to acknowledge the people who suffer in this world so that we can associate and identify with them. It is a call to look at the ways we align ourselves with wealth, power, prestige, and comfort, gifts of this world that Jesus wants nothing to do with and divest of anything that doesn't lead us to Christ. It's a call to live in the kingdom that Jesus came to bring, not the one that saw him as a threat. As much as I love Christmas pageants and nativity scenes, I believe that they do us a disservice if all we take from them is a warm feeling. The story of Christ's birth is a story for adults, one that should unsettle us and force us to change our lives. If Jesus wouldn't have invited you or me the first time he came, if he wouldn't approve of what we value today, what makes us think will be invited to adore him when he comes again? That is a very grown-up question we have to ask ourselves. Merry Christmas.